Bonjour, comment ça va? Ça va bien aujourd'hui? Et hey, quoi ça dit? Pas grand chose? Hope you practice some of those greetings that we've learned so far. Welcome back to another lesson in Louisiana French. And um, this is our fourth video. And uh, before we begin, let me just make a couple of clarifications. Um, I've been calling them lesson one, two, three, and four. Uh, I'm just trying out these videos the very first time. Uh, but um, they, uh, for those of you who have received the packets, I have a, a, a few dozen people who have uh, um, wanted the packets, the paper information. If you receive the information, um, the lessons don't normally correspond exactly to the paper information, and, and which you might see in the book, uh, in the document, excuse me, with the li li listed in French as lesson un, lesson deux, lesson trois, um, don't necessarily correspond to the number of the videos because um, the documents I'm giving you are, are documents or versions of documents that I use when I'm teaching my actual in-person class, which is what I actually very much prefer doing, but I'm enjoying doing this for you right now during our time of a um, kind of a isolation, I should say. Um, uh, but um, just to let you know, those who are interested that I do, um, once this, uh, our little uh, social distancing um, and uh, we're still praying everything goes well with the, with the virus, uh, once all this is over, um, I will resume uh, teaching. At, uh, I teach night classes through UL for adults, University of Louisiana at Lafayette for those who are from another part of the country or the world. Um, so if you're in Lafayette, Louisiana, and you're interested in taking these classes, you'll get a lot more, much more information. They're very affordable, and I do teach those uh, three times a year, a beginners and an intermediate class uh, in the spring, summer, and in the fall. Um, I also, in the summer, I used to teach other classes through, uh, through CFMA at the Jean Lafitte Center in Eunice, and in, here in Lafayette, I've taught classes there, Tesh Center for the Arts. So there's other classes that, that may come about. So for those of you interested in more detail and more practice, uh, and, you're, and you can come locally to one of those classes, uh, be on the lookout for that. All right? So again, the documents that you're using don't necessarily correspond uh, um, exactly with the lessons in, uh, with the lessons as they're listed on the video. But I will let you know where they correspond when, when we're going through it um, in relation today. Um, last time when we left off, we were discussing pronunciations. We're going to talk about that, finish that up, that little page. That's the very last page in the packet. And um, we're going to talk, finish talking about that. Today we did a vowel pronunciations. So we're going to do some consonant pronunciations and some other pronunciations. And then we're going to talk about, uh, we'll get into parts of what's listed as lesson trois in the packet. All right? Tout le monde est là? All right. So, so let's talk about some uh, consonant pronunciations. Consonants, um, uh, and we'll learn some vocabulary at the same time, so it'll be kind of cool. Uh, so consonants. Uh, Whenever you see a C, and the C comes before an A, an O, or a U, uh, that's pronounced like the English K sound, right? Um, or whenever you see a Q, U, that's pronounced like a K sound. Q, U is not K, W, quoi, but it is the K sound in French, okay? So let me give you a couple examples of that. You have the word carat uh, uh, and carot. So those you're following on the back page right here. There it is, the back page right there. Um, for those of you... Um, following in carrot, try it, carrot, mm -hmm. uh, carrot is a carrot, yes, carrot, um, cole, cole, uh, cole uh, means to, um, c-o-l-l-e-r, it means uh, to stick or to glue, uh, and we use that in Louisiana French, but by extension Louisiana French, we also have a, the term uh, cole, si on va cole, it means we're going to stick to each other, it means we're going to dance close, you know, we're going to dance close to each other. Uh, like be close to each other, I should say. Danser coller is dancing close to each other. Like you hear in a, in a song, um, it's a, 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 a traditional um, Cajun Creole song uh, called Allons danser colenda. And it's a, in the song it says, Allons danser colenda, danser coller colenda, which is let's dance colenda, uh, dance close colenda. Um, in the modern Cajun Creole versions, a colenda becomes a girl, but originally it was meant to be a dance, like uh, I think it was called calenda in the other day, old days. But um, but if you listen to the song of this, Allons danser colenda, danser colé colenda. And uh, so it's about dancing close. And there's another line, the other lines in the song are things like, uh, Pour faire fâcher les vieilles femmes, which means to make the old, old, the old women mad. Uh, and... Uh, uh, it says, ta mère pas là. It means, wow, your mom's not, wow, your mother's not around. 
we're going to dance close. So you can take that as you like it. But coller, good word. Coller also again, again means to stick or to glue. Basque la colle is the word for glue. Uh, you've probably uh, all done when you were kids, done a, a collage. Uh, collage means a gluing, okay, because you're cutting papers and gluing them together and collage. Coller always means to, to glue, to stick or to be close. Try another word, culbit, culbit. Uh -huh. uh, culbit is like a um, C U L B U um, T E. Culbit is like a could be like a flip or a somersault or some type of a uh, you know kind of movement in that sense. You know, an acrobat, a gymnast would do the would do culbit. And then last word with a, with a Q U would be cot. Q U A T R E. Cot is the number four in French. We don't tend to pronounce the R E at the end. Again, that goes back to that idea that we don't tend to pronounce the little E sound. So you have cot. So, um, so j'ai fait quatre culbutes. You know, I did four flips, four somersaults, which I probably would not do. But <laughs> that's, um, or could not do it, is a better expression of that. Okay. Now, the C also can make the, the sound that we hear in the letter S, but it only makes that when it's in front of an E, or it's in front of an I, or when it has, uh, has that, like, that little tail, like you see right here, okay, like that little tail right there. Um, that's called the, in French the CD, and when and then that makes it have the C sound. So when the C comes in front of an A and O or U, but then it has that little tail, then you pronounce it like an S. Um, an S could, at the beginning of a word also is pronounced like an S, and an SS, two S's in the middle of a word, is also pronounced like an S. So those are all the ways to make the S sound. So we can do a couple of terms like, um, here's one that uses both, both C sounds, cercueil, try that, cercueil, C-E-R, C-U, E I L cercueil. Cercueil is the word for a casket or a coffin. Cercueil. The C E that makes that because it's in front of an E, it makes an S sound. Cueil because it's in front of a U, it makes that K sound. Cercueil. All right. You'll um, you'll hear. Um, I like to use references to Louisiana French music, for example. So you'll hear. Um, there's a very Allons danser Colindo was a very popular song. Another very popular song was called J'ai passé devant ta porte, which is a uh, I passed in front of your door, and um, for those of you who might be, uh, some of you might be familiar with the song, goes, J'ai passé devant ta porte, j'ai crié bye bye la belle. So I passed in front of your door, I cried goodbye to my beautiful one, my sweetheart, my girlfriend. Um, y'a personne qui m'a répondu, there was no one who answered me. Oh, ye ya, mon coeur fait mal, oh, my heart hurts. Now, and later on in the song, you get the reason why the sweetheart, La Belle, did not répondu, did not respond. It was because um, j'ai vu, he says, j'ai vu les uh, chandelles autour de ton cercueil. Uh, I saw the candles all around your coffin, your casket. So she was dead, yes. Yeah, yeah we tend to kind of like have these songs like that where we, uh, uh, we uh, in Louisiana French, where <laughs> they actually have uh, these very sad things. But yeah, we dance very happily to them. You know, it helps us to get through les misères dans la vie. So another thing, we're going to get through la misère. Maybe the music would be a good thing to help us get through what we're going through today. All right, so um, let me see here. All right, let me get back to where we're. And then we have the word sip. It's spelled as an R. You tip to, you, I've seen it spelled C Y P R E or um, S C I P R E C I P P E. Uh, sip is the word we use for the cypress tree in Louisiana, which is actually the bald cypress. Uh, and um, from my understanding, I'm not a botanist, and where I'm standing, it's not considered a true cypress. It's more like the same family as like the sequoias and redwoods, if I'm not mistaken. But it's, um, the French have a term called cypre in France or in other parts of the world. They have a term called cypre uh, for a cypress tree. Uh, but it's a different variety of tree. It's not the same thing. Um, the word we use, sip, is different from a cypre. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's sip, and we don't pronounce the R-E, sip. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, uh, another word. Uh, for example, a word beginning with an S at the beginning. We have that sound, salir, which would mean to make dirty. And another one with the S, S sound would be poisson. In the middle, the SS, poisson, P O I S S O N, which is the word for fish. Now, the CH in French, in Louisiana French, and in international French as well, always um, sounds like the SH sound. Um, so you have a word like choqué, which means to get mad or to be shocked in anger, you know, char, we did before, and char, which is the Louisiana French word for a car, char, we say char. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me.
And so I will, um, my throat's a little dry, so I'm going to, oops, you kind of saw the mess I had behind me. I thought I hid it behind me, but I had to get a cup of coffee, so I will be okay. All right, now, so the, um, <laughs> the uh, S a CH sound makes the SH sound. So example, you have in words such as um, uh, showcase, shad, and shah, then we have the G. A G before an A, O, or a U, um, it sounds like the G you hear in go. So for example, you got a word like garde. Garde means to keep, garde. Garde is also a, a abbreviated version of the word regarde, or regarde, uh, which means to look. And sometimes you'll hear garde used, that we kind of chop it, so it means both of those. Gate, gate, which means um, which means to spoil, and uh, or spoiled if you're depending on how you write it, and then gorge. Now listen, in gorge, you have two G's in that word, G O R G E. That's the word for your throat. Uh, gorge, the first G is that hard G, like I consider G O. The second G is that sound like you hear in, in English, in like in the word uh, the the continent of Asia, that J sound, and because that one's followed by an E. So when G is before an E or an I, it makes the it makes the J sound. When it's the J, when it's a J also, it makes the J sound. So for example, in a word like gelé, try that gelé, gelé, which means to freeze. Okay, giromont, giromont, uh, giromont is the Louisiana French word for a pumpkin. Uh, other places they call it citrouille, but both citrouille and giromont internationally are varieties of the same uh, species. So we use the term giromont, and of course. The, with the J, Jambon, like in my last name, Jambon. By the way, for those of you who don't know what my last name means, um, in French, my last name is in, actually means ham. Um, it has no reflection upon my personality whatsoever, though I promise you. Uh, Jambon, so you have those terms, okay? Um, now, an H is a far interesting phenomenon in French. The H in international French typically is uh, is never pronounced. Actually, never pronounced. Sometimes it's called it's aspirated out, which means sometimes you can um, you can make like for example, there's a the if there's a final consonant before it, you can attach it into the vowel sound. Sometimes you can't. Um, in Louisiana French, uh, a lot of times when it's aspirated, we pronounce it like an English H, and when it's not unaspirated, it's silent, just like in French. Uh, but there are some different versions of that. Uh, you find that in Old Acadian French as well, that H was pronounced as well. So, for example, it's silent in a word like haricot. Uh, haricot is the word for a green bean, a string bean, or, or any type of bean. Well, not any type of bean, but some other types of beans as well. And so you would say les haricots to mean the green beans, les haricots. We did that when we did the greeting, les haricots, comment les haricots. That L-E-S attaches to the haricot, and you don't hear the H, okay? But you hear it in a word like ho, for example, which is high, we did en ho, which means up or high, ho, low hot, we did that word, meaning ho, you'll hear it there. Internationally, you would not say that, it would be o, it would just be en ho, when we say en ho, we pronounce the H sound. Um, another good Louisiana word, hale, hale is the word we use to mean to pull, it comes from the nautical term meaning to tug or to pull, hale. Um, and then... An R, if we talked about four, is of that rolled R. So you can do it like, you know, like in a word like rassemble, rassemble, or français, you're hearing that rolled R. Um, so if you're having troubles, uh, just try rolling R. It's, we roll it more toward the tips, kind of as similar to Spanish R, but not quite as, uh, I, mean, I guess, many rolls. But uh, I used to tell people, if you can't do it, remember when you were a little kid, you'd play with little toys and you probably went brrrr. I, I told that to one person one time and they said, no, I never did that. I went brrrr. I said, well, never mind. But give it a try. Français, rassemble. Now the S between the two vowels um, and the Z both make the English Z sound. So for example, uh, we did earlier the word poisson, P-O-I-S-S-O-N, poisson, had two S's pronounced like an S. If you just put one S in there, that's poison, P-O-I-S-O-N, which is spelled exactly like the word poison because that's what it is. So in French, you want to eat a poisson, French, but you don't want to eat poison, poison. No, that's not good. Okay, some other words, for example, uh, aise, it's the S A I S E, e a, uh, it's called the E accent aigu. Uh, aise is a French word for a Louisiana French word for, for easy, aise. And then zir, a good Louisiana French word, zir. Zir refers to disgust or uh, uh, something that just, you know, as we would say when I was a kid, grosses you out. Okay, zir. Zir is an old Acadian word, an old French word you found in old documents, zir. 
Um, in Louisiana French, we've actually made it into like a, a very popular adjective. We say, oh, ça c'est zirab. Try that. Ça c'est zirab. Oh, ça c'est zirab. You know, zirab, that means like, that's gross, disgusting. I don't want to deal with that, you know. Uh, yeah, zirab. Okay, well, that, ugh, that gets on my nerves, you know, zirab. All right. Now, there is the English sound ch, which is pronounced in, in French. In French, typically, it would be spelled with the TCH if it, if it has there. But in Louisiana French, we do make the TCH sound for certain words. And it's, it goes back to the, uh, an Acadian pronunciation, old Acadian pronunciation, where, where the, the, the TI or the QU, which would, the TI, which would be TU, the QU would be the K sound, and then the TCH as well. Um, and sometimes there's the C sound, the K, would also be pronounced, would often be pronounced as CH. Uh, so you have it in um, you have it in different words. For example, if I wanted to, if you gave something, for example, the word the, the word to hold in French tenir simply is pronounced tiens. And if you want, you want to give somebody something, you would say tiens. You actually say hold. That's we say tiens. And every often in Louisiana French, you say tiens, tiens, and which you found in old Acadian French tiens. You know, um, a good Louisiana French word as well that for our, we use for a blackbird is a choc. That's right, choc, choc. Okay, and then. Um, you have, um, we have by extension, it's a little interesting, there's an old expression, um, il était sous comme un choc, um, and sometimes that choc, sometimes it's choc, choc or choc, il était sous comme un choc, sous comme un choc, which means he was as drunk as the blackbird. Um, it meant that, uh, it came from an idea that the birds sometimes would eat these berries, which would kind of inebriate them or make them seem inebriated. And so, uh, by extension, again, Louisiana French, we love to do these kind of things. Um, we've made, uh, we made a verb from the verb chalk or chalk. We've had the verb chake. Uh, chake meaning to get drunk. Uh, and basically you're saying, you know, to get blackbirded. You know, when we say that in French, but it means to get drunk. You know, so it comes from that idea. Uh, but there are other words, like for example, you'll hear, for example, um, other words that sometimes have the chus on. For example, like um, the word in French for a half, uh, one of the words for half, there are two of them. One is uh, moitié. In Louisiana French, we say moche, la moche. Uh, we pronounce that T-I in the middle as a C-H. So you'll, you'll see that's a sound you would hear as well. And of course, there is no T-H sound in any variety of French. So whenever you see a T-H, it's pronounced like a T, like on bois du thé. Um, I'm not drinking tea, I'm drinking coffee, but on bois du thé, we drink tea. Okay? All right. So we'll get to the other consonant sounds in our next, next um, um, uh, lesson, I should say. Let's do a little bit of practice with a little some place names today. We're going to do a little place names. Um, in Louisiana, certain place names um, um, have a, a difference. Uh, they, we pronounce them a little differently than you might hear from other places. Um, so, um, and whenever you're going to a place, you're either going to say a, o, a, la. A, or where you're at a place, you would say a, o, or a, la. A, meaning to or at. So if it's, uh, sometimes you just use a. Sometimes you're going to use o if the first word is a masculine word, uh, because a o a a u means uh, to the, so a le. Sometimes you say a la when it's a first word is a feminine word, and sometimes you're going to say o a u x when that word is plural. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of places. Um, let's talk about this one. A la pointe de l'église. Try that. A la pointe de l'église. A la pointe de l'église. That means church point, which is a town in Louisiana, also in Nova Scotia. All right. Au Pombro, try that. Au Pombro, which means uh, to or at Brobridge, which is a town in Louisiana. Um, so you have these different ways to say that you're going to a certain place. So those of you who have the documents, I want you to look over some of those places uh, that you see there. Okay, and if you're going to a place, you're going to use you can use forms of the verb to go. And we we uh, inform the resident to go. The verb to go is called aller. Okay, so if you want to say I'm going, for example, I'm going to Church Point. I would say, je vais à, je vais à la pointe de l'église. Je vais, try right. je vais, meaning I go. Va is the sound of the verb aller. If you're going to Brobridge, tu vas au Pombro. Tu vas au Pombro. Okay? You want to say, I live, you can say like this. For example, I can say, if I live in Lafayette, I can say, uh, if I live in Lafayette, I can say, je reste à Lafayette. Je reste à Lafayette. Okay? Let's suppose you live. Um, let's suppose you live um, in New Orleans. Okay, I would say tu restes à la Nouvelle Orléans, but more commonly we would actually say tu restes en ville. We use the term en ville to describe in New Orleans. Because, um, in Louisiana French, uh, basically every every other city or town except for New Orleans is called a village, a town. Um, um, ville 
a village, village is like village or town. Ville is town or city. But la seule ville, the only town, the only real city is the word uh, is for New Orleans. So, so once you practice those, those are on page five and you practice it in, in lesson, lesson trois. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll continue that and we'll do some more pronunciations. We'll do some more practice with place names next time. Okay. Don't forget to Facebook message me if you want um, a copy of the documents. Uh, again, you can go to uh, Facebook, go to your uh, message, look for my name, Kirby Jambon, and Facebook message you. I will add you to a group, and I put I already attached the documents in that group. You might have to scroll up to find it, and you can ask some questions there as well. Okay? Um, and that's for those of you who are not, not Facebook friends. My Facebook friends, it should be easy to, to get together with me. Okay? Et mes amis, merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Um, I've saw, seen we've had, uh, we're close to about 6,000 views of the videos, uh, lots of uh, subscribers, I think about 400 subscribers, and I um, um, I think it's wonderful. I'm happy to be generous uh, to do this because I've been inspired by the generosity of other folks doing this kind of thing during this time period where we're trying to stay safe and keep everybody healthy. So I'm happy to do this for you during this time. Uh, others have generosity. Uh, others' generosity has inspired me. And uh, I'm constantly inspired by other folks in life. And uh, merci beaucoup. Soignez-vous. Y'all take care. Et soignez les autres. Take care of each other. Take care of all the others. Okay? C'est bon. On va se voir plus tard. We're going to see each other later. Bye-bye.